Hey everybody, welcome back to Sophisticates by Mary. So, for this tutorial, I want to show you how to make a palette knife petal buttercream cake. Now these palette knife cakes are all the rage, and I know they can look a little intimidating, but for this kind of a design, this is kind of a entry level, get your feet wet way of doing it. So if this sounds interesting, stick around. I knew I wanted to do a tall cake. Now I wasn't sure if I wanted to do a double barrel or not. So here I'm just kind of showing you how I am deciding. I just, I'm sticking them one on top of the other and deciding. And I decided to go for four layers of cake. Six I felt was just gonna be a little too tall since this is a six inch cake. So now we're gonna go ahead and get our cakes leveled and filled. I'm just using a serrated knife and finding that spot where your cake meets the met the top of the pan that little indentation there now just place your knife in there about a quarter of an inch spin the turntable tuck your elbow close to your side and let the turntable do the work for you i'm going to do this for all of these cakes and now we have them all leveled i put a little ganache on the board just to get it to stick to my display plate and so I can get the cake to stick on to the board as well. So there's some some ganache underneath it and on top of it. And I place my first layer of cake down and I'm using the same ganache to fill it. I like to use a piping bag, just it's a little less messy. I don't do it every time, but most of the time I do. And I'm just piping it in rings and then using my offset spatula to get it leveled out. Now this is how you stack a tall cake. If it's anything above, I'd say four layers of cake, I go ahead and I put some straws and a cake board in between, starting after the third layer of cake. I just put some more of the ganache on top of that top, top layer of cake and press your board on top of that. And then put another layer of ganache on top of that board so that the rest of your, well, your next layer of cake will stick to that. And this gives it very good stability. Now I'm just piping in between the layers of cake just to make sure that I have good coverage and smoothing it out with my, with my, pat, or my spatula there, or not spatula, my scraper. And now I'm going in and hindsight, I kind of wish I had popped it. I would suggest popping it in your refrigerator for 10 to 20 minutes to get that ganache to firm up because you can see how it's wanting to kind of move around. It's a little loosey-goosey. Um, I do end up fixing that, but to prevent that from happening, see there, I'm just pushing it back into place, just using my fingers and pushing it back. Um, to prevent that, just go ahead and pop it in your refrigerator, save yourself the trouble, get that ganache to set up before you mess with that. Same goes for if you're using buttercream. Just go ahead and set it in your refrigerator to get it to set up. Now the crumb coat is just a layer of buttercream or ganache that is going to lock in those crumbs and set it in your fridge for 20 minutes or your freezer for 10 minutes and then apply your final coat of buttercream or ganache, whichever you choose to use. Any kind of buttercream will work or any flavor of ganache. I would recommend a ganache if that goes with your flavor choice for a tall cake, just for the stability factor. Now I'm just piping this buttercream all the way around it and then I'm gonna smooth it out with my scraper. I start with my smaller one and then I go in with a taller one. I kind of flip back and forth. I would say if you are newer to tall cakes, go ahead and use a taller scraper. It's a little bit um, easier to control. You don't have to fight with blending those lines because when you use a smaller scraper, you can kind of accidentally cause some lines throughout the buttercream. And just pull that lip in towards the middle and set it back in your refrigerator or your freezer to firm up. Now since I am doing an ombre painting technique on here, um, I guess I would say stick with your refrigerator because you don't want to leave it in your freezer for too long and then have it start to have some condensation as you're painting because that will cause some drip marks. So I would say your refrigerator for no longer than 20 minutes. I've already changed my mind, don't I? <laughs> and then I just kind of used, it was just food coloring mixed with a little Everclear. You can use vodka 
You can use lemon extract is fine too. Just to get, I wanted this more of a butter or a watercolor ombre. So I'm just using my brush to put it on and then I'm using that sponge to kind of blend it in a little bit. You can make this as dark as you want. I wanted it more of a soft watercolor ombre. And I decided to add some more texture and I'm just using a paper towel that I'm just wadding up and then I'm going to wrap it around my fingertips, dip it in some thinned out buttercream and just kind of stipple it on there. It's a real quick, easy way to get a little bit of extra texture and do as much or as little as you want. Now this is where I am mixing my color for the petals that I'm going to use the palette knife to apply. And I'm just using more of a pointed palette knife. You don't have to. If you use a regular offset spatula, you can, because it's actually a spatula, this is not a palette knife. If you want to use a regular offset spatula, you're just going to get wider petals. Now I just kind of scrape it on. It's hard to, I'm going to need to do a video where I show that a little closer. I put some buttercream on the spatula and then I kind of wipe the edges off so that most of it is towards the middle and just try to do this in one fluid motion if you can you just place your palette knife down and pull up it's really very simple and do these sporadically wherever you feel looks appropriate you could create a design where they're more of kind of a cascading technique if you want to also. I just decided to go with this this time. And I'm just using some dragees right where the petals meet or at the base of the petals. You could do more petals if you wanted to to make it more look more like a flower. This is a, kind of more of an abstract version of it. And to get those on there, I'm just sticking my finger in some water and or dipping it in water and then dipping it in the dragees and then transferring them on that way. And this is where I'm going to put my flower in. I'm using a straw with a little buttercream inside it because I wanted it to hold it up, which I found didn't really work. So I, in a minute here, right there, I'm just adding a little more buttercream underneath it to prop it up. And then I'm sticking the rest of the flowers into that straw also. And then the ones that are hanging down, I had put some buttercream on the side of the cake to get those to stick also. So nothing is actually sticking in the cake. And those are have some buttercream behind them also. I just cut, these are silk flowers and I just kind of cut up some of the blooms off. I think they're actually cherry blossoms. And the bigger one is more of a, a peony style. And I just, I'm using a leaf tip. Not a leaf tip, I'm sorry, uh, a rose tip. And I'm holding it with the fat end up. And I'm just adding these extra little dollops of buttercream, again, for some more texture. You can omit that if you want. I just kind of like the look of it. I thought it was a little, a little too simple and I wanted to add a little extra. And of course, we need to go in with our edible gold leaf. I think that takes every cake up a notch. And I'm just using a small fluffy brush and just patting it on. The cake was still a little damp, so it was holding the uh, gold leaf to it just fine. If it's not sticking, then just brush on a little water and that will do the trick. And my hands are clean, I promise. And then I put some on the other side towards the bottom just for cohesiveness and to bring the design together. So there it is, my introductory level palette knife buttercream petal cake. I think as long as you know how to put a cake together and you can work with a palette knife a little bit, you can achieve this look as well. 
So thank you guys so much for taking the time to watch my video. And if you'd like to watch some other videos, go ahead and click on the link to one of these other videos shown here. And if you would like to check out my other social media, I am on Facebook and Instagram under the same name, Sophisticate Spy Mary. And please take the time to share, like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so that you know when I upload another video. Thank you so much. And we'll catch you on the next tutorial.